Good evening, and thank you for coming out. My name is Gloria Bouti, and I'm a professor in the College of Education at the University of South Carolina. And how are the children? That is the question that the Maasai warriors of Kenya, East Africa, would ask each other each time they met. If you know anything about Maasai warriors, perhaps it is surprising to find out that they asked that question when they met because they were known to be among the most fierce and intelligent warriors of all time. When they asked that question, what they wanted to hear was the children are well. When we say the children are well, we know that peace and prosperity will prevail. The Maasai people still ask that question as part of their customary greeting, and how are the children? I wonder what it would be like if we took to asking each other that question every day, and how are the children? Imagine if the president of every country, every governor, parents and non-parents alike, every CEO, every doctor, began a press conference or a meeting by asking a question, and how are the children? Could we say the children are well? That is a question I think about very often. And in my work, in my teaching, my service, and my scholarship, I try to think about who are the children whose needs are least likely to be met, and how might I advocate on their behalf? So that's the nature of my work. I, I tend to focus on children of color, African American, Asian American, Latino American, Native American, and biracial American children, children who are English language learners, children who are poor, and children who are marginalized in other ways. Because I understand that those children's needs are not always met in school. Today I'm just gonna talk a little bit about my last book, um, Educating African American Students, and as a backdrop for that, land drop, that landscape, I want to point out that the United Nations has declared this decade, 2014 to 2025, as the international year of, for, of people from Af of African descent. And the reason they did that is because they wanted to call attention to the gross injustices that many people from African backgrounds, wherever they are, face. Likewise, you are probably familiar with the Black Lives Movement matter. It's also to call attention to issues that children and people who are African American are facing in this country. So in my work, um, sometimes I have to um, talk about things that are a little bit difficult to talk about in, in order to call attention to African American children. So sometimes I will apologize in advance if I offend you. I have to use some four letter words. So I have to say things like race, I have to say things like love and hate and what that looks like in an educational setting. And so one of the first things I tend to do, because my goal is to help educators want to teach African American children, to see it as something that's exhilarating and joyful. So first I have to lay out the landscape. And one of the pieces of data I like to show is from the National Assessment of Educational Progress, the NAEP data. And I'd like to look at the long-term trend data that's been around since 1970s up until today. And one of the trends that we know is that African-American children tend to be at the very bottom for reasons that are not inherent to themselves or their families. So I want to call attention to what can we do in our classrooms to make this a better place for them. But not only academically are African-American children facing lots and lots of um, problems, also socially and emotionally as well. Imagine what it's like for a child who, by the time the child is five, they've watched maybe 5,000 hours of television and the media, and they've seen images of people from different backgrounds. And a lot of those images of African Americans are not always positive. Imagine also if you go to school and you never see yourself represented in the curriculum, in the books you begin to think, well, this is not really the group I want to be a part of. So psychologically, there's damage. It is not uncommon to hear a three, four, five-year-old African-American child say, I don't want to be brown. And so my work is to help teachers create classrooms where children 
where all children feel welcome in the classroom. And so I do have to talk about issues like race and racism, and I have to talk about institutional racism, which is a difficult conversation to have, but important. Now the way I do that to make it more engaging is I try to have educators leave my classrooms with a sense of hope. And when I say hope, I'm using Derek Bell's concept of hope. He talks about the difference between naive hope and sober hope. So naive hope is the sort of hope where you hear people say, well, let's just hold hands and sing kumbaya and everything's gonna be okay. But it's really not um, sober. Sober hope is, is when you see things for what they are, just like if you were sober and not inebriated, and you can see that there are gonna be some things that are gonna be hard, but at the end, there's hope. So my goal at the end of the day is to make sure that educators and others understand that there are many places where African-American children are doing well. And in my book, I show models of teachers who are doing well. I show schools. I show whole states where African-American children are doing well. So we know it can be done. I even work with teachers here in Columbia, my colleagues and I, to show that this can be done. So at the end of the day, when we ask the question, and how are the children, then my hope is that we'll be able to say the children are well. Yes, the children are well.